just breaking my heart. It's just breaking my heart. I just didn't ever expect anything like that to happen here. Uh, after 19 kids and two teachers died yesterday in a mass school shooting in Texas, parents here in western Washington may struggle with how to explain to their kids what happened. We do want to bring in Dr. Doug Zadick, the uh, UW Medicine's Department of Psychiatry here. Dr. Zadick, thank you so much for joining us this morning. We appreciate it. Thank you, Liz. Um, so obviously this is, uh, this is a tough day, especially for parents right now who have to send their kids off to school. I, how do we broach this topic with kids? Uh, I mean, how do you bring it up? For, should you bring it up first? Should you wait for kids to bring it up? Is there ever a time where you shouldn't talk about it? Yeah, Liz, these are these are really excellent and challenging questions. Um, you know, we're sort of in this this tension between wanting to protect our kids from just even hearing about this, you know, and 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 sort of knowing that this is happening in Uvalde, Texas this week, Buffalo last week, and the 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 idea that this story is unfolding, it's on social media, they may be exposed to this. And so, you know, the the the, the better part of things might be to be a bit proactive and 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 that starts with sort of knowing your own reactions and knowing your kids and your family um you know asking yourself how do i feel about this where do i stand and also knowing where your child is uh, developmentally emotionally intellectually um for kids for 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 younger kids seven and younger you you may not have to broach the topic unless you think they're going to be exposed to it and then you know, uh, conversations that are more simple, one sentence explanations, you know, things that, that sort of resonate with your own feelings. And maybe, you know, um, if, if you want to talk about some of the heroics, sort of end on a positive and reassuring note, that might be okay. For older kids, you know, school age, eight to 12 and teens, it's, it might be more challenging. And, and, you know, you might want to think through having a conversation because th these kids are likely to, to encounter today and tomorrow the, the topic. And so, you know, setting aside a time when you can be calm and that there's a, there's a chance for you to focus your attention, maybe making lunch in the morning or after dinner at night, when you can really have a conversation where you can start off maybe sort of asking your, your kids what they, what, what they know, what they've been told by friends or on social media, and really allowing a chance for them to express their ideas, their questions, their emotions. That, that's really sort of core to beginning this conversation, okay? Um, you know, the, the details, you know, it, it make the conversation, if you can, resonate with your values and ideas without filling it with your own emotions, allowing your kids to express what they need to. And also then sort of trying to end on a reassuring note. I know it's challenging and we're all worried about these events just continuing, but it, it, any kind of reassurance that you're doing everything you can to make school, make school environments that they go into safe and that they're, they're responsible, if you believe it, that they're responsible adults, teachers and principals at their own school who are also tracking these issues. Um, so when we talk a little bit about different age groups when it comes to different mass shootings i mean i mean second graders to high schoolers i mean we've all got to talk about these things i mean those conversations look very different as well yes they, they do and um you know you know if you're you know beyond sort of seven and younger you know eight to twelve or so you know kids may just be, have some exposure to social media i mean I, they, a key thing is 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 having the conversations and trying to reduce exposure to social media or if your eight to twelve year old really wants to follow this you know maybe you can sit down with them and watch it with them and have a have a discrete period of time where you you sort of process the news after uh, after you watch it with them. With teenagers, they may be, um, you know, they have their own access to social media. They have friends they may want to process with, with. So they're sort of offering your time and and seeing if they're interested in, in talking with you. Teenagers will also be more concerned about uh, action and what to do, social justice. We're hearing a little bit about a middle school in Tacoma. Um, so, you know, sort of, again, resonating with those issues and trying to meet your, 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 your child, your teen, where they're at, I think is really important. I mean, so what happens next? I mean, let's say you have this conversation with your kids and, and maybe today they're having major anxiety about going to school. I mean, you, I can understand why they would. I mean, what, what do you do as a parent in, at that point? 
Yeah, and so I think you want to begin a dialogue. I mean, I think where things stand, unfortunately, in the United States is that these events happen with regularity, right? And you want to just open a, a dialogue. Um, you know, what, what typically happens is that the, the intensive anxiety might go down over the days and weeks and hopefully, you know, next week there's not another horrible shooting or massacre, you know. And then, but if, if kids have ongoing symptoms, distraction, inability to uh, focus at school, sort of regression to, to older behaviors, you know, early developmental behaviors that, that they sort of passed on. That's when to think about sort of uh, seeking out professional health a mental health counselor or something like that. And also for parents, similarly, if, you know, if, if it, nor, in the usual setting, things will kind of calm down for a while and then there'll be another event. But if you find yourself really revved, unable to sleep, you know, um, those sorts of things also think about sort of professional counseling. All right, Dr. Doug Zadig, thank you so much for being with us, uh, especially thank for you, a Liz. lot of parents and kids on a, on a really tough day. Thank you. Take care.